Hi, I'm Sylvie, and I'm a trapeze acrobat. You know those really cool people who swing over a huge trampoline in a circus? And you're thinking, how the heck they're doing that? Yep, that's me. But before I tell you how my perfect life fell to pieces, please like and subscribe to MSA. My parents owned a big circus. We often toured abroad, so I was mostly homeschooled. But books weren't my jam anyway. I dreamt of becoming a trapeze artist. I started training when I was only five, and by 16, I was ready for the big stage. Everything was going smoothly, till one night before my performance, I fell and injured my arm permanently. Not only was my dream of becoming a trapeze artist shattered, I might never be able to use my arm the same way again. The doctors put me on physical therapy, where I met Claude. The first time I spotted him, he was limping on his broken foot, running away from the nurses, and I couldn't help <laughs> laughing. But later that evening, I was in the garden when Claude walked up to me. Just so you know, I'm not actually scared of needles. I was just doing that to make the nurses laugh. Oh my god, a spider! Please save me! I have really weak bones! Ouch! And I have a broken arm! Get off me! First, make that disgusting creature go away. Oh wait, I know kung fu. Hua! Hey, 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 Oh wow, that didn't work at all. That's because you're doing it wrong. Hey! See, all done. Thanks. I blame my kindergarten teacher. She was from Nicaragua, and she couldn't pronounce the ya sound. How did you say it again? Ya! Yeah. From the epiglottis? Okay, now I'm out of breath. Imagine if she was from, oh man. <laughs> oh man, your life would be harder. And that's how Claude and I became friends. He would drop by my room, and we'd go for our session together. He was goofy, fun, cute, and a really good listener. Besides being scared of needles, he told me he was a football player who had injured his ankle, and I told him how I'd never be a trapeze artist again. So, what's the first thing you'll do after you get out of the hospital? Climb on the trapeze for one last time, and say goodbye forever. You really miss it, huh? You bet. What about you? What's the first thing you'd do? Let's see, I'd watch a romantic movie, eat pizza, and take a walk in my favorite park. Oh, and the other night, I went alone, and I saw a crocodile, and he was about to attack me. So did you scare them with your hi -ya moves, or die? Well, obviously I died. But then I came back to amuse you for a bit, and then go back <laughs> to his stomach and continue dying. But yeah, I enjoy going out by myself. You mean, enjoying going on a date all by yourself? Alone? Oh, you're welcome to join me if you want. And let the crocodile eat me? No thank you. As Claude leaned in, my heart started beating faster. I thought he was about to kiss me when he slapped his hands together, killing a mosquito. The next morning, I woke up excited to see Claude again, but he never showed up for the session. When I asked around, the nurse told me he'd left the night before. I tried calling and texting him, but he didn't answer. He didn't even say goodbye? I could never really forget about him. Not even after a whole month had passed, I couldn't go back on the trapeze, so I started helping mom with costumes at the circus, and I actually enjoyed it. I got better at designing with time, and in 12th grade, I decided to join a school like a regular student, make some friends, and live a normal life. But my first day was anything but normal. I was running down the hallway, struggling to find my class, when I crashed into someone. Slow down, human train. Could have hurt yourself bad. Sylvie? Oh my god, is that really you? Are you blind? You hurt him. He has really brittle bones. Oh honey, is my honey boo hurt? Let me check. Ow, I'm fine, I'm fine. And this is Sylphie, and this is... Girlfriend. What kind of name is Selfie? No, her name is Sylphie. Sorry, I got this pimple between my teeth and upper lip on the gum. Hi, I I'm Sylvie. Uh, wait, saliva? Like, saliva from the hospital? How nice to finally meet you. Syl... Ugh, forget it. I'll just be on my way. Not so soon. Babe, just leave. Savannah and I have some catching up to do. Anne was bad with names, but she wasn't so bad to look at. She was, in fact, really pretty and sophisticated. Anne was Claude's childhood friend, and they had been dating for a while now. She also told me that Claude had a medical condition that made his bones weak. But thank God he has me to look after him. I just have to be around to look after him all the time. You'll see. And I did, when later one day in the cafeteria, we were having lunch, and suddenly Anne sprung from her chair. Wait, is that pasta? Claude can't have pasta. He choked on it when he was six. Yeah, but he's not six anymore. And my mom made this. Can't risk my Poochie Poo's life because your mom suddenly decided to act like Gordon Ramsay. And since when did clowns start cooking? She's not a clown. She runs the circus. Ugh, potato, potato, they're all the same. With that, she tossed my plate aside. I felt so bad. But later, Claude asked me for the pasta again and ended up eating the whole thing. Best meal ever. I know. It's my mom's specialty. It tastes better when it's hot, but your girlfriend ruined that. Do I smell jealousy? 
What? No, I'm telling you, she doesn't like me. Uh, you're overthinking it. I have this weird condition that makes my bones weak. That's how I ended up with a broken ankle, and Anne just wants to make sure I'm okay. This one time, I fell from the toilet seat while pooping. I was four and I broke my arm. I was a fat kid. Wait, why am I telling you this? No clue. The point is, she might not be the warmest person, but she's not bad. Give it time, she'll warm up to you. But Anne never did. If anything, she only got weirder. I just wanted to mind my business, so I decided to keep my distance from both of them, but Claude just wouldn't let me. He sat next to me in class, during lunch, and he even volunteered to be my lab partner. I was so distracted that I accidentally dropped a test tube, causing a small fire. No one was hurt, but I landed in detention. And after that miserably long day, I was headed back home when Claude pulled up to me in a sports car and offered to drop me off. When I refused, he got out and started following me. What now? I'm just confused why you're ignoring me. I thought we were good friends. No, Claude, I thought we were good friends. You just took off one day without so much as saying a goodbye. And when I tried calling you, you ignored me. I didn't. I left because dad showed up and I had no choice. And I would have called you, but I somehow lost your number. But you're right, I should have tried harder. Next time, I'll use my dad's jet to look for you. You? Driving a jet? I can hardly imagine you driving a donkey. Eh, uh, you're right. <laughs> I'd be scared. What if the donkey gets mad and kicks me in the face? I'm too pretty to roam around with a broken nose. Ha <laughs> ha, not funny. Come on, Sylvie. You're not even on social media. What do you want me to do? Listen, I I'm really sorry. Let me make it up to you. How about an ice cream? For old time's sake? I'll think about it. I'll wait for you. Don't hold your breath. <gasps> too late. We did hang out for ice cream a couple of days later and connected like old times. He told me he was back into training for football and I told him about my new love for designing. Things were going smooth until one day, mom told me that the circus was running heavy losses. With the bills piling up, mom and dad were constantly stressed about money. I offered to take up a job, but mom refused saying that I needed to concentrate on my studies. I was running out of options. Then I turned to Claude for ideas. This might be a long shot, but my dad's on the school football board, and he told me they were looking at redesigning our uniform. Maybe you could pitch your ideas to them? But you have professionals for that kind of stuff. And what if I'm not good enough? You won't know if you don't try. Just come over for dinner and we can take it from there. I was really nervous about going to Claude's place for the first time and picked out my best dress. He was already waiting to escort me, along with Anne, who looked grumpy as always. Claude's parents were just as sweet as he was. His dad offered to put in a good word and gave me a week to pitch my designs. It'll save us a lot of money if a student does the designs for the uniform. And Claude speaks very highly of you. I trust my son's opinion. Thank you, sir. You've been very generous and kind. After the dinner, I was in the powder room when Anne walked over. Did you know Claude wet his bed till he was five? His bones are so weak, a butterfly can hurt him. And he thought eating eggshells would make him stronger. What's your point? My point is that you don't know him the way that I do, and I've worked hard on making this relationship stick, and I am not leaving. So just stay away from Claude. He's mine. Get yourself checked. You sound like a moron. I'm serious. So am I. What an idiot! Later in the evening as I was leaving, it started raining heavily and Claude offered to drop me off at home. I had no other choice, so I agreed. But I was so tired that night that I dozed off. When I woke up, Claude was staring at me with his deep blue eyes and I felt my heart leap into my mouth. What are you doing? Just watching you. You know, you were saying my name in your sleep. <laughs> no, I wasn't. Yeah, you were. And I don't mind, actually. I like when you say my name. Why are you doing this? What? flirting with me when you have a girlfriend? Maybe I forget it. You're right, I shouldn't have said anything. I'll see you at school tomorrow. As I watched Claude drive off, my heart sank thinking how much I liked him and that he might never love me the same way. The next few days were a blur. I was working around the clock to finish my designs. It took me a week, but I was finally done. Meanwhile, it was Claude's 18th birthday and Anne told me she was throwing a surprise party for Claude at the beach and had invited all his friends. I was a little surprised that she invited me, but Claude had been super helpful these past few days, so I agreed to go. But right when I was getting ready, I got a frantic call from Anne. Hurry! Claude fell off his bike and broke his leg again! We took him to the hospital and I'm giving him blood, but I'm running out of it. Just come and give him some of yours. You won't run out of blood, Anne. That's not how it works. And I don't even know if I'm his type. Uh, duh, you'll never be his type. But how does that matter now? You know what? Forget it. I'm on my way. Anne texted me the location, but when I got there, it wasn't a hospital. It was just some creepy construction building. That witch set me up! Ugh. I turned around to leave when this homeless guy jumped out of nowhere. 
Hey, sugar, mind lending me a few bucks? Get away from me, you creep! He grabbed my arm, but luckily, I was a trained gymnast, so I twisted my arm around in a way that he lost his grip, and I ran with all my might, but I tripped and fell. The next thing I know, I was in the hospital with a cast around my arm, and my parents, Claude and Anne, staring me in the face. How are you feeling? Angry! What is this witch doing here? Get her out! Now! Everyone stared at me in shock when I told them how Anne had made up some story about Claude being in the hospital. No, I didn't! Babe, I was with you the whole time! You know that! Shut up! Stop lying! I'm sure there must be some misunderstanding, Sylvie. Anne would never hurt you. I know her. Well, maybe you don't know her as well as you think. Just leave, all of you! I skipped school for the next few days and focused on recovering. Claude tried to call me a few times, but I didn't answer. I just wanted a break from all this drama. The day I went back to school, it was announced that this year, the football team board had chosen my designs for their new uniforms. I cried from happiness as my designs were shown on the screen, and everyone applauded, including Claude. Congratulations. You deserve it. Couldn't have done it without you, so thanks. Sylvie, can we move on and get back to how we were? I wish, but your girlfriend hates me, Claude, and I don't think I'm comfortable with that. What if I told you that Anne's not really my girlfriend? Claude told me that Anne's dad worked for his dad, and when she was just five, he left her mom for another woman. A year later, her mom remarried, and Anne was left all alone. So my family took her in and raised her. You know, when I was six, Anne saved me from a bunch of bullies, or they would have hurt me really bad. I really owed it to her, and when she asked me out, I just couldn't say no. Really? So I'm just some charity case for you? I saved your broken butt for years, and this is how you repay me? By choosing a circus clown over me? Anne. But Anne was so mad, she picked up a rock and threw it at Claude, but it missed. Are you crazy? That could have really hurt me. You know I have a condition. You broke my heart, and I'd be happier if that was your head instead. But yeah, you can't get everything in life after all. Except my aunt, who robbed her husband and ran away with another man. She got both money and love, so maybe you can get everything. But that's not the point. Anyway, I thought after I deleted Savannah's number from your phone, you'd finally stay away. But obviously, that didn't work. You did what? I deleted Viviana's number from your phone. Seriously, pay attention. And you also tricked me into missing Claude's party. Why not admit that too? Fine, I did that, but I didn't know that you'd end up falling. How dumb are you to fall in the same arm twice? You're a real piece of work, Anne. That guy could have hurt me really badly. And you didn't think twice before setting me up like that? And for what? So I couldn't attend a party? Well, yeah, technically, but it didn't work, did it? Gosh, I knew I should have gone with some professional and not my stupid uncle. That homeless guy was your uncle? Yeah, the one my aunt ran away with. Keep up, Savannah. That's enough. I've been silent, but no more. I like Sylvie. There, I said it. She's the one I want to be with. And I'm done with you and this relationship. I don't have the energy for this. I am unsubscribing from this drama. You can't do that. Watch me. With that, Claude took my hand and we turned around to leave when I noticed Anne pick up another rock. It would have hit Claude in his head if I didn't get in the way. Thankfully, a few kids noticed the drama and pulled Anne away. I wasn't badly injured, but after that day, Claude swore to protect me with his life, even if that meant fighting a spider.